Hi, this is Dr. Moore. And today I'd like to talk to you about one of the hottest topics in medicine, stem cells and stem cell research. But first, let's talk about where they come from and clarify some of the media terms that you've been hearing. I put together a brief overview of developmental physiology, very brief. And at the top left-hand corner here, once we've had our birds and bees talk, we all know that the ovum and sperm get together to form an embryo. Well, what the embryo is, is a bunch of cells that can differentiate into any structure and system in the body. And collectively, that's called stem cells. Well, these stem cells go into another stage of differentiation into layers when the embryo is developing called the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Collectively, they're called progenitor cells. And before I lose you, that's it. So now you know everything about developmental physiology. The next exciting area is research and where it's going. But before we get into growing tissue and organs and recombinant DNA, in reality, there's only a few products on the market, and I'm only going to discuss two of them today. One of, is, one of them is uh, platelet-rich plasma, and this is something that's taken from your own blood, spun down in a centrifuge, and applied to wounds that won't heal, tissues that are also having a hard time healing, and they're getting great results. It's mainly used in the office or the clinic setting, but you can also use it in the operating room. The next one, which are amniotic cells, I think is a little bit more promising because it's, these cells are actually comprised of progenitor cells and growth factors since it comes from the amniotic layer uh, during gestation. And even though these are donor cells, they're all put through strict standards from the American Association of Tissue Banks and the FDA, of course, through something called the Puron process. So they're completely safe. And I think what's most exciting about these cells is that besides utilizing them in the office for something that has a tough time healing, like plantar fasciitis, to come to my profession, or uh, a long-term Achilles tendonitis, or something that's a wound that is having troubles covering due to a patient uh, immune response or someone with diabetes, is that this can be easily applied and the new studies coming out are showing great results. The newest and some, an area that I'm really excited about because I do a lot of joint procedures, joint salvage, and of course arthroscopic examinations of the ankle, well, the procedure itself is a great procedure because it's diagnostic, you can see what's going on, and then of course you can clean out anything and repair anything once you're in there. Now we have the opportunity to shoot something into the ankle that we mix together in the operating room or the clinic to possibly repair the areas that couldn't be repaired before. Because in short, cartilage is not alive. It sits right on top of the bone where it receives its nutrients. So that pretty slick white stuff you see on a chicken bone that's inside of our joints that keeps it lubricated and smooth, once it becomes detached and gets coined from the term arthritis, it's not going to repair. So uh, upon its removal, it will give the patient a relief, but it's usually covered with a scar tissue, an analogy called uh, fibrocartilage. And the new research is showing that some of this amnionic tissue or amnion cells injected into the joints is helping repair these deficits or lesions. Uh, it, it's all exciting, but I won't keep rambling on. If you would like to see more or some of the procedures, you can go to my website at www.myfootfix.com or just call us or email me for, for, uh, for questions and we'll try to uh, address those at my next blog. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, stay healthy, and one step ahead.